Greetings, everybody. Welcome to our next video lecture for ENC 1101. My name, of course, is Jackie Pierce, and I will be guiding you um, through some definitions and discussion of the writing process and other essay basics. The lessons from this particular uh, video lecture will apply not only in 1101, but as you are writing papers or even essay questions on tests for any class that you are doing. So the first, <clears throat> excuse me, the first concept that we want to take a look at is just the writing process. It is always important to remember that writing does not just happen. Uh, we tend to think of professional writers as just kind of spilling out all these brilliant ideas. And that's not the way any writing works. And professional writers will tell you uh, even more so about how important the process of writing is. Pre-writing or the planning stage is tricky. Um, we tend to gloss over this. We tend to wait until the last minute, and I know I'm guilty of doing the same thing. Um, and if we wait until the last minute, we tend to not spend enough time planning. Um, if you can get yourself to shift your focus to the pre-writing, you will actually create a lot fewer problems for yourself when it comes to writing the actual paper in the drafting process, and then, of course, revising it and making it as polished and as wonderful as it can possibly be. So pre-writing or planning, drafting or writing, and then revision, which includes proofreading, but is not entirely made up of checking for grammar and spelling errors. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Another concept that I want us to take a look at is the ratio in writing um, and in speech as well, between ideas and details. Uh, we tend to focus on ideas uh, in our culture. We think, oh, I've got to come up with a great idea for this paper. I've got to have some kind of new idea that I want to include. And the reality is that good writing is actually only 25% idea and 75% details. Without details, ideas are somewhat meaningless. Um, I'll give you a great example. During every election year, you will notice that every candidate out there is going to say things like, I believe in education. Um, nobody's going to say, oh, I don't like education. We shouldn't educate people. That's just not a thing. No matter what your political leanings, people are going to say, I, you know, I support education. The problem that, with that is, okay, but how are you going to improve education? So it's the details that are lacking, not the idea. The idea that education is important is something we all kind of agree on. The problems come in when you try to figure out the details of how to make those things better. So for example, smaller class sizes mean that you have to hire more teachers. There's a teacher shortage because teacher uh, salaries are very low and so on and so forth and so on and so forth. So what's really important in that discussion is not the idea, but the details and how that, de how that idea could be made to uh, work out. So thinking about planning, um, there are certain goals and techniques that we have when we pre-write. And one of the things I'm really going to encourage you is to try different things out and see what works for you. Because I know when I was in school, um, both high school and college, a lot of my instructors would absolutely, you know, require me to turn in an elaborate outline. I had to have Roman numerals and letters and all kinds of, of things. And my brain just didn't work that way. So I would end up writing the paper and then creating an outline, which is not exactly what we're looking for uh, when we talk about planning and pre-writing. It should take place before the essay exists, um, to be honest. But outlining is a good strategy, and it works really well for some people. Um, as I have gotten older and and in in my teaching career, I've noticed I do a lot more outlining than I used to. 
Brainstorming, of course, doesn't have to be written down, but I'm going to encourage you to, as you're thinking about potential topics and as you're fleshing out those topics and thinking about what you already know, I want you to write things down. Um, and that's just a general piece of advice I have in, in, for life for life across the board um, is that the more things you write down, the less likely you are to lose track of those things later. Uh, so writing things down, brainstorming is really just as simple as making a list. Um, and I am a list maker. Some of you will be, some of you won't be. Um, if lists work for you, then brainstorming is a technique that you will want to embrace. Some people do better when there are specific questions to answer. Who, what, when, where, why, and how, of course, are the basic questions. But um, sometimes this is helpful to get a friend or family member involved and to say, okay, I have to write a question. I have to write a paper on X. So you ask me questions about it and I'll answer them. And then you both jot down some notes about it. And that can be a pre-writing technique that works really well. Um, so sometimes having a sounding board or a real person is important. Or of course, you can always ask yourself the questions as well. Um, there's a lot of different terminology for diagramming. Um, I've seen it called tree diagrams. I've seen it called mapping. There's a lot of different ways that people put it, but essentially if you're a very visual person um, and especially if you, if you like to see the connections between things, sometimes using the diagramming or tree uh, system is extremely helpful. So you start with your topic in the middle and you branch out, hence the term tree that we see used a lot. Um, the farther out you get, the more detailed you get and that helps you provide um, some very clear definition and just, just, uh, direction for whatever project that you're working on. For most of the writing that you'll do in college, you're also going to have to gather information during the pre-writing phase. So conducting your research, that's something we're gonna talk a lot about in modules two and three, but for right now, I just want you to think about the fact that even if you're only getting information from yourself, you're still kind of conducting research. Um, so finding information, finding facts and figures to support what you're saying, all those things, um, that's something that's gonna play into most writing that you'll do as well. I also want to encourage you, as we're thinking about research going forward, to keep an open mind about where you can find information. Most of us these days go straight to the Google window on our phones and type in something and get that information, or we ask Siri, or we ask Alexa. Um, but there's a whole world of information out there uh, that we're gonna that we're gonna delve into when we get into the research section as well. When you are conducting research, you do have to find some way of having notes. Um, and you know, you again, I want you to use what works for you. I used to my teachers used to always focus on the um, three by five note card method, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, in fact, I kind of like it because if you're working on your paper's organization and you have every individual fact is written on its own little card, you can sort of play what I call research paper solitaire, for lack of a better term, where you move things around and change the order and see what makes sense. So if that works for you, then that's awesome. Um, personally, lately, I cannot read my own handwriting, uh, to be honest. So normally what I do is I take notes in Microsoft Word. Um, that's a separate file from the paper that I'm working on, but I'll put all my notes, all my sources, all the research that I've done in a file, um, and save it on my computer because that way I can read it, I can access it, I can even copy and paste if I'm quoting directly, that sort of thing. So find what works for you as you are conducting research and taking notes, and it will help you when we get to the drafting stage. So drafting is just a fancy word for taking that information in whatever form it's in. Maybe it's a list, maybe it's a, a, an outline, maybe it's just a rough outline, maybe it's, you know, 
700 note cards with different pieces of information on them. Um, but taking whatever level of planning that you've done and morphing that into an actual essay. So we're building sentences, we're building paragraphs, we're building that into an essay. And we'll talk a little bit more about parts of an essay uh, a little bit later on. There is no right or wrong answer to how many drafts you should go through. Um, to be honest, you're never really done. I mean, I, I've never met a 100% pure perfect piece of writing. Um, and I've been doing this a long time uh, and, and including my own, by the way. Uh, so it's not just, it's not just student writing. I, my writing is never hundred percent perfect either. Um, so the drafting process also plays into revision. And after we've started writing, essentially we're constantly going back and forth between drafting and revision. I do want you to take a look and think about two specific terms within revision because, as I mentioned earlier, we want to separate proofreading or copy editing from revision itself. Revision is the, looking at the big picture. So this is what the paper's contents are. Um, it also involves looking at the organization and the level of detail. Proofreading, on the other hand, is minute. It's looking at those small pictures. Um, it should be your last goal, um, which oftentimes I know I cannot stop myself from making grammatical surface error changes as I go, and I don't want you to stop doing that either. But proofreading as an activity should really be something that occurs after the paper is completely done, and you're ready to turn it in, then you proofread. Uh, when we proofread, of course, we're looking for surface errors. We're looking at the words. We're looking at the diction. We're looking at grammar and punctuation and spelling and all those things. And it is super, super important not to rely entirely on grammar check uh, for your proofreading. Uh, people are always going to do a more thorough job of proofreading than a computer program is, no matter how good the computer program is. So you'll want to proofread it yourself, but I also highly encourage you to get friends and family involved, go to the learning center, have one of the tutors help you proofread, um, get other sets of eyes on it besides your own, because of course we often miss our own errors. I mean, that just kind of makes sense. Um, one of the keys to revision and proofreading is that you cannot afford to wait until the last minute, because if you're trying to scramble and proofread and edit and revise and all those things and the papers do in 15, 20 minutes, that's not going to be a very effective process. So you want to take some time away from it, finish it early take a little break and then come back to it. Even if it's just as simple as, oh, I'm gonna take the dog out for a walk and then I'll come back and proofread my paper or I'm gonna go watch you know, a single episode of my favorite TV show or, or something along those lines. Um, but take some time away from it before you try to do these things because it really will help a great deal. Next, I wanna talk about some concepts within revision that were kind of implied by that list, but these three terms are gonna be very specific terms you'll want to know. Unity in writing refers to the idea that your writing, your piece of writing is sticking to the point. It is all related to that point that you're trying to make. So unity means you're not putting in extra stuff. Unity means you're not getting yourself off track. Unity means that you are following through with what you said you wanted to do. And if you are looking at your paper and you realize that it's mostly about dogs, but then on page 17, there's this one little paragraph about cats. If I'm revising for unity, I, all I'm going to have to do there is delete the paragraph about cats. And now I've created unity. Or and this happens more often, I write a paper that I think is going to be about dogs and I end up talking an awful lot about cats. So when I'm revising for unity, I actually just revise my thesis statement to indicate that I'm going to talk about both dogs and cats in that paper. 
Development refers to level of detail and length. So most of the time you'll be writing for a college assignment. And most of the time you are going to have a, require, uh, a requirement for how long that paper has to be. I personally would love to just get rid of requirements altogether and say, write it until you're done or write it until you've included everything you want to include. Um, but that's not realistic. And it's not realistic in real life either because things do have required lengths and, and that sort of thing. So development is more than just the length. It really deals with that ratio again of ideas to details. Are you including enough details to really explain what you are trying to explain? Um, and when you're revising for development, that's what you're looking for. Are there places where I could go in more depth? Are there places where I could give more specifics? Um, and that will strengthen your writing. And then finally, coherence, which refers to logical organization. Uh, is the paper easy to understand? Is it easy to follow if you're not the person who wrote it? Um, and, and so that is really taking an eye, taking a look at it with the eyes of someone who's going to be reading it. Um, this is where another person comes in really, really handy because again, <coughs> excuse me, of course it's coherent to you. You wrote it. So um, enlist help when revising for coherent. So I've thrown some phrases around, some words around, and that I want to make sure that we're all on the same page with. So a sentence, what is a sentence? A sentence, of course, is a collection of words. It ends usually in a period, sometimes in a question mark. Uh, but it has a noun and a verb. I mean, that is all that's required for there to be an actual sentence. But we use sentences to make up paragraphs. So a paragraph is designed, is defined as a set of sentences that develops one main idea. There is no right or wrong answer to how long a paragraph needs to be, but typically we think of five to seven sentences. And that's not a bad kind of rule of thumb. Personally, I actually prefer to look at the paragraph length when it's typed and on that double spaced page. So a half a page, three quarters of a page. If it's much shorter than that, probably could use some more detail. And if it's much longer than that, it might need to be more than one sentence. I mean, sorry, more than one paragraph. So then we write paragraphs. We have a set of those that goes together to form the essay, right? Two of those paragraphs will be the introduction and the conclusion. And when you are writing for college purposes, keep your introduction and your conclusion to a single paragraph. And at the end of the introduction, you have a clear thesis statement. In your body paragraphs, you provide topic sentences that show the idea behind each of those body paragraphs. If you do those things, if your papers are that well organized and those cues are there, you are going to do well in college writing. It's just a given. So the building blocks of an essay are those sentences, which then come together to form paragraphs. But then I also want you to think about those paragraphs. Sometimes within a longer essay, especially, you really have more than one section. So I'll give you an example. If I were going to write a paragraph about, you know, two of the most notorious serial killers in history or whatever, and let's say one of them was Jeffrey Dahmer and one of them was Charles Manson, okay? In that paper, I'm going to have more than one paragraph about Jeffrey Dahmer. So the paragraphs that relate to Jeffrey Dahmer then become a whole section of my paper. And in some cases, we even use headings and subheadings and chapter titles and things like that to divide up those sections. For the most part, the things that you're going to write in college will not have formal sections like pair or like like chapters, um, but you may have collections of paragraphs within the larger essay that form their own section. So the important paragraphs and sentences include that introduction and the conclusion. Like I said, keep them to one each. And those paragraphs might even be a little bit shorter 
than the body and content paragraphs in the middle. Um, we tend to do it the opposite way. Uh, in fact, I know I've, I've found myself doing this a lot, which is I write the introduction and I realize, oh my gosh, I've already said everything I wanted to say. So keep that introduction paragraph fairly short. The final sentence of that introduction should be one sentence and it should be your thesis statement. A thesis statement is not only going to state the topic, but it's also going to preview how you're going to elaborate or develop that topic. Um, and then topic sentences, of course, we don't always have like super obvious topic sentences in body paragraphs, but there should be a clear idea statement somewhere in those paragraphs that show what all those details are meant to do. And that is the equivalent for the paragraph of the what the thesis statement does for the essay itself. So final thoughts. You've got to find what works best for you. And you have to experiment in order to do that. Um, you may also find that when you have very short things to write, you don't have to be as organized. When you have very long projects to write, you have to schedule things out a little bit more clearly. Um, I want you to find your best techniques for writing and do not be afraid to ask for help figuring out what those best techniques are. Um, your Little Siegel Handbook has a lot of information on introductions, conclusions, writing topic sentences and thesis statements and things of that nature. Um, so in addition to this le lecture, don't be afraid to look uh, into that as well um, because it's gonna give you a lot more information. There are also, of course, great websites and we have on-campus help either through me, through the library, through the Learning Center, uh, for making your writing everything that it can be. So thanks, and I will talk to you again soon.